Okay. So this one. There are lots of ways to do this right. Um, so what's the first thing you think of? U substitution. U substitution, I like that idea. You could also do, think section 7-4. You could also use by parts. Parts is not going to work. Nope. Long division. Has been said that? I think I might have heard that. Okay. But substitution also works. So let's try substitution, okay? So what do you think you're going to substitute for? U equals x plus 10. Great. U equals x plus 10. And I think I sent out kind of like a long announcement that said that on one of those quiz questions that we gave, there were like three ways to do it right. And this is kind of like what you would do after you did a substitution. It's kind of similar. Okay, so if u is x plus 10, what's du? dx, spectacular. So you've replaced the bottom. You need to replace the x in the numerator. So you solve your substitution for x. Mm -hmm. x is equal to u minus 10. And I know lots of you don't like this, but you should really change your bounds because it actually is easier. I swear, I'm not just like pulling your leg. So if x equals 0, what's u? 10. And if x is equal to 5, u is equal to 15. And then you can forget the first integral ever existed. You can just solve the second one like the first one never was. Hmm? So now, because you have a, it's called a monomial in your denominator, you can break this up into two fractions, right? U over U minus 10 over U. Is that a, that's a legit operation, right? Mm -hmm. Versus is taking X over X plus 10 into X over X plus X over 10 a legit operation? God, no, please don't do that. That's one of those like kitten killing mistakes. Teachers cry when you do stuff like that, okay? I shed tears. Okay, so that becomes one minus 10 over u. Can you do it now? Yes. Yes. So that's u minus 10, natural log, absolute value u. 10 to 15. <coughs> so what's that? 5 minus 10 natural log of 15 plus 10 natural log of 10, right? Can you simplify that? Um, you can, but it's not going to be required. So I think since it's a review lesson, I don't really want to go into it too much. You can use rules of logs to make that look a little bit different, like to make it into a ratio and stuff. Don't worry about it, okay, because you don't have to do it in your test. Worry about if you're trying to check with Wolfram Alpha and see if your answer is the same, but otherwise it's not a big deal. Okay. How about this guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, u sub square root x. Okay, so then du is 1 half x to the negative 1 half dx. 1 over 2 root x dx. So what replaces the dx and the over root x? Just a u or? I think it'd be 2 du. Do you agree with that? So 2, and then it just becomes sine of u, doesn't it? I mean, with u substitutions, often you pick the right thing, and it's really simple, right? No, but definitely would be 2. So to get this thing, as you need to change it so it's dx over root x. You multiply by 2 to get the 2 out of the denominator. Yep. So is it negative cosine or positive cosine? Negative cosine. Negative cosine. Great. So negative 2 cosine root x plus c. So 
So this stuff is not going to play a prominent role in your test because technically it officially is like the previous class, but you still need to do it. Does that make sense? So, and watch out for stuff like things where you can do a U sub instead of a trig sub because it's a lot easier, right? Okay, awesome. All right, now when you take your test, I'm not going to tell you what technique to use. The things are going to be all mixed up. Hopefully the first problem isn't the hardest one, so it like psychs you out in the first go, okay? Like, we'll try to not do that to you. But, so, you will have to know when to apply integration by parts, when to do a trig sub, when to do trig metric integrals, like use the Pythagorean stuff, okay? So you have to kind of, like, identify patterns and things. And a good pattern for integration by parts is that you see a product, right? Okay. So, this one's a basic one. What do you let u equal? Mm -hmm. And what do you let dv equal? The rest of it, cosine 2x. du is then dx, and v is great, 1 half sine 2x. Awesome. So equals, and I think the formula was uv minus integral v du, right? Great. So uv will be 1 half x sine of 2x minus integral of 1 half sine 2x dx. Okay. So 1 half x sine of 2x minus a half times, what's the antiderivative of sine of 2x? 1 half cosine 2x, and is it negative? I think yes. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. All right. Yep, so that's just simplified. And if you can do this in fewer steps, of course you're allowed to. 1 half sine 2x plus a quarter cosine 2x plus C. Just to make my grading life at teensy bit easier, I think we're going to have you keep things like fully distributed. Does that make sense? So we can all look at the same consistent answer. Also, I've had problems with, I don't know if students know how to distribute negatives correctly, so I want to make sure that they actually can. Yes? Okay. <clears throat> so you had like a sign of 2x here. Can we do the double angle theorem there, or is that not relevant? You can. It's not going to be helpful. Yeah, it's not wrong, but then you do a substitution to integrate it further, so it's not actually helpful. Okay, how about this guy? U equals ln x. I must already have that. You should already have this, yes. Du is 1 over x dx, yep. Dv is... Mm -hmm. And then going backwards, v is... Great. Two fifths x to the five over two. Okay. So two fifths x to the five halves ln x. One reason it's nicer to write it that way versus putting the ln first is then it's totally obvious that the x to the five halves is not inside the ln. Does that make sense? Okay. Minus the integral. 2 fifths x to the 5 halves times 1 over x dx. Can you simplify the expression inside the integral, integrand at all? Mm -hmm. What's become x to the that's always going to happen, isn't it? Every single time we do something like this, because it always ends up being you integrate the, I don't know, x to the n term, right? Then you multiply it by 1 over x, which is going to take this power back down by 1, just undoes what you just did, right? Okay. So that's 2 fifths x to the 5 halves ln x minus, what's this going to be? 4 over 25, great. x to the 5 halves, and then plus c. And that works for x to all kinds of powers, right? Like, you know, 
How would you do if it was a root ln x? You change the at root x into x to the one half, right? Yeah. So just you know x to any power. Okay. All right, this one is one that got you in your quiz. Don't hit you with the stick. You can run from it or learn from it. Run from it? No, no, that is the wrong choice. Rafiki's gonna hit you again. Just kidding. Okay, so no one will be damn, no one will be hurt in this class. I promise. I'm not gonna actually hit anybody, but you might miss points. So. One sort of a special application of integration by parts is that you can let dv equal dx. Arctan, arc sine, natural log, like this works really well to inverse functions. It's kind of a common thing. So u is arctan 3x. And then you may not forget calculus 1, as in you cannot forget what the derivative of arctan is. Sorry. <coughs> not until you're done with school, or at least this class. So du is, uh huh, and then because of the chain rule, you've got to multiply that by. Mm -hmm. I know of a teacher who's retired who used to make people sing like the song like Chain of Love or something whenever they forgot the chain rule. No, it was, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I could just sing the song and then you would always remember it because it'd be so horrifying. So everyone clear where that, that three came from? Okay. So this is equal to uv, so x arctan of 3x minus, what do you get when you multiply v and du? Mm -hmm. Great. And this is probably the, the manner in which substitution could come up in your test, right? As in, like, it comes up inside of a problem that involves some other technique. Because to solve that, to figure out this last antiderivative, you have to do substitution, right? And what do you let your substitution be? 1 plus 9x squared. Yep, I think that's what you meant, right? Mm -hmm. And then dw is 18x dx. Great. So you have x arctan of... 3x minus 3 eighteenths <laughs> integral, I think that's 1 over w dw. I took the 3 out, right? That's where that went. Okay. So x arctan 3x minus 1 6th. Natural log, absolute value of w. Do I technically need the absolute value bars here? No. I won't take them off if you have them and they're superfluous, right? But if you don't have them and they're needed, then you would lose points, okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if that problem makes you uncomfortable, I can promise you that there's an example of it in the notes from 7-1, the take-home quiz, the in-class quiz, if you want to practice, go do all three of those problems over again. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like, was it really the exact same? Was it the exact same problem? Okay, well, change that to like the take-home quiz was arctan of natural log of x, I believe, wasn't it? Something like that. It was like arctan of natural log of x over x. Maybe. I don't remember exactly. There's an example in all three places. Oh, this is your favorite. What do you have to do? You go around the world. And you have a choice. Okay, I'm going to show you, because somebody asked a question about my test that I gave, and they asked if the way that they chose um, stuff is okay. So let's talk about this one versus this one. So does it matter which one I choose? It doesn't actually matter which one I choose, but one of them is better. Okay? This, this should be either the 2x. Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so if I choose the first one, my du is 2e to the 2x dx, right? And my v is minus cosine of x, yes? If I choose the second one, my du is cosine x, my v is a half e to the 2x, right? Um, and so if you choose the second 
sort of like U, UDV method or makes us make that choice, you're going to work with fractions the whole time. Does that make sense? If I do the one that I chose first, I'm going to work with negatives and also whole numbers is kind of the kicker. Does that make sense? I think you're less liable to make mistakes with whole numbers. Do you agree? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So like, I'm, I think on the practice test that I gave, the, it's like e to the x sine of 3x or something like that, right? So maybe it's cosine, I can't remember. But it's easier to work with whole numbers than fractions, so I would choose the way that results in whole numbers. If there's numbers inside the e and the sine, you're, kind of, you're going to have fractions no matter which way you go. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so I'm going to pick the first one because I think it's better. If you did it the other way, you should get the same answer eventually as long as making mistakes. Okay, so this will equal uv, so negative e to the 2x cosine x minus v du. So is it okay if I make that a plus right away because my v is negative? And I've got a 2 integral e to the 2x cosine of x dx. So do it again. U is e to the 2x. Du is 2 e to the 2x. You call it u sub 1? Or... You could call it. I'm not going to be picky about that. But if you wanted to be sort of like really thorough, you could. V is equal to sine, I think, right? Personal name. I always have to check those by differentiation or I mix, I mix them up. So e to the 2x sine x minus twice integral e to the 2x sine x dx. If you do encounter an around the world problem, how many times will you have to repeat the integration by parts process? Just twice, right? If you do it more than that, stuff's going to start canceling. You're just going to avoid like, kind of going in circles a little bit. So this is negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 e to the 2x sine x minus 4 integrals of e to the 2x sine x dx. Yes, then you add all four integrals to the other side. Um, when I did this in class, I said something like let i equal the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx so I can quit writing the thing over and over. Does that make sense? You don't have to do that, but if you do use i, make sure you say what i is. Okay? And you can use fancy math word. Thus. Okay, well, that makes me happy. 5i is equal to negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2e to the 2x sine x. And your integral is equal to negative fifth e to the 2x cosine x plus 2 fifths e to the 2x sine x. That's the easiest one, in my opinion, to forget the plus c on because it isn't exactly clear where you should introduce it. Does that make sense? Probably technically right here. And then it just becomes c over 5 is just another constant c. Where did you get the 5? Um, this thing is i. And I have the thing from the beginning is equal to this stuff. So I ended up with the intermediate step I skipped there was that I really have i equals negative e to the 2x cosine x plus 2e to the 2x sine x minus 4i. Okay. Does that, you see that? So I've really got this thing equals all that business. Okay. Does that make sense? What equals means means this thing's equal to that, is the same as that thing. So therefore I can treat it like an equation and I can add the negative 4 integrals to the other integral. Yep. I actually had to look in the book to, for this to really make sense to me. Okay, well, I'm glad it makes sense now. Okay, so there's 
that's kind of it for integration by parts, right? All right, so we're a basic one. LN's a little bit special. Inverse trig and around the world. Whoa, trig integrals. Woo! Okay. So, technically this one you can do two ways. You can let u equal sine or u equal cosine. I don't care which one. I do think one's easier though. I think letting u equal sine is probably gonna be easier. Why, why would I think that? Yeah, the derivative is positive. Okay. So if that's your end goal, you have to save a singular cosine theta, but change the other cosine thetas into sines. So this is still, I'm not gonna change anything yet. Sine squared, sorry, cubed theta, cosine squared theta, cosine theta d theta, and that one's being saved. watch Doctor Who, but all I can think about when I think about saved is the episode of Doctor Who in the library. Aww. And if you guys watch Doctor Who. Yeah, that's an old one, isn't it? Yeah, well, yeah, there are lots of better old ones. What do you change cosine squared into? Mm -hmm. How many of these steps do you want to see? Oh. How about you can, you can skip straight to the second one, right? Definitely you can show less than me. Yeah. I, I'm not so worried about steps on tests because when on tests I usually know it's you. It's steps on written homework that it's a problem because of Wolfram Alpha, right? So, but yeah, here don't worry too much about it. I would show me the thing that you changed and then do your substitution. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do the bounds become? Zero to one. Oh, that's nice. Yay, look at that, so nice. No one else is thinking that's nice. Okay, U cubed. Okay, you're welcome. Is that all right? Okay, then it's just distribute, which you could, of course, have done in one step if you felt like it. So what we got there, one fourth u to the fourth minus one sixth u to the sixth. Have I convinced anybody that changing bounds is better than not changing bounds yet? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Good. One fourth minus a sixth. I think it's one fourth minus a sixth, right? Oh, God. Common denominators. So three twelfths minus two twelfths. Yeah, okay. One twelfth. I don't fifth grade math well. You know? Yeah. So. That's what your calculator's for? Or you are the be the calculator. Sorry. No, no, I, I was trying to make a joke. Okay. All right. What about when you have even powers on sine and cosine? What's your only option? What do you have to use? Half angle, the whole half double angle things. I can't. I don't know what they're called exactly, but anyway. So this is the same thing as sine squared of five x squared. And of course, you could skip that step. Uh, what is sine squared of 5x equal to? One half? 10x, exactly. The angle doubles. So whole thing, parenthesis, parenthesis squared. I think that's enough parentheses. The kicker there is the one half also squares, yes? Okay, so just make sure that you actually do that. And then let's expand out the rest of it, which is, I know, sorry, 1 minus how many cosines of 10x? 2. And then the last term is plus cosine squared of 10x, right? And the first term you could integrate, the second term you can anti-differentiate, the third term you're like, oh, crap. So you just do it again. You just do it again. And your arm gets tired of writing so much, but otherwise you're okay, right? Plus a half, and this time it's one plus, plus and the angle inside the cosine is now 
20x. Very good. Yeah. I know. So when I combine like terms inside of my integrand, what do I have? How many constant? Three halves. Three halves. Minus 2 cosine of 10x plus a half cosine 20x. Oh. Three halves x minus. Where'd you get the three halves from? Um, I added the one and the one half. Oh. So this one half distributes to that first one, and it's just combining like terms. Okay. Uh, what's the antiderivative of cosine of 10x? Sine of 10x, and there would be an over 10 there, right? Mm -hmm. So with that two, it would become a one fifth. Yes? Okay. Uh, this one's going to be a 1 20th times a 1 half will give us 1. Mm -hmm. And I, I guess if I interpret my own um, distribute rules, let's just do that. 3 eighths x. Wait, what of those should change signs? Nope. 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 Because cosine's antiderivative is sine, right? You hear, yeah. yep, it's not just people just mix up anti differentiation and differentiation. Like I said, personally, I always like. I know it's the opposite trig function, and then I take the derivative just to check and see if I'm right. That's how I figure out which one it's supposed to be. You guys agree with that? Did I multiply right? Okay. Alrighty. Are, are they really? Yes. Okay, great. They're easier than the others. So what would you let u equal in this case? Secant or tan? Tan. So I think secant. Tell me why tan don't work. Because you would need to save a secant squared, and you've got a singular secant left over then. Does that make sense? Good? Okay, so you got to let u equal secant. And then du is... Secant theta, tan theta, d theta. Some of them you can do both ways. I mean, like the one put in your quiz, which accidentally you could do both ways. So, you know, happens. So you make this tan to the fourth theta, secant squared theta, times secant theta, tan theta. Oh. So who do we have to change? The tan to the fourth or the secant squared? Hand of the fourth. Oh, shiznits. So, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is one. Get the identity correct. Tan squared theta plus one equals secant squared theta, right? So, tan to the fourth is secant squared theta minus one squared. Secant squared theta secant theta, tan theta, d theta. So u squared minus 1 squared, u squared du. <coughs> I also, we do get that the test is like a lot of writing, so I'm pretty sure we did check. We can both do it in about 15 minutes, writing on all of our steps. Yeah, but I have a lot more experience than you guys do. If I'm on my own, I just kind of like go in the zone and I math. You know, it's so I think me time, usually when I do that, the fastest person in class can finish in about 35 minutes. And not that you have to, but I think it should be okay. So that's, no, 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 no. Um, it's not a challenge because, of course, you can also check your work, right? So, so you should probably use your time all. Did you, somebody had a question? Oh, yeah. Did you, did you go back and grade when you did in 15 minutes? Did I go back and check it? Did you go see yeah, what your score was in 15 minutes? 
Oh, no, I didn't actually do that. <laughs> I almost always make some kind of stupid mistake. Um, almost always. Like something like I add incorrectly or forget to anti-differentiate or do something really dumb. But this is the great thing about working together is that we make answer keys and we check against each other. So like, you know, I, I, those dumb mistakes wouldn't be not present if I slowed down either. They would still be there. I just, I'm not capable of being perfect. So some people are. Okay, so the antiderivative is um, one-seventh secant to the seventh theta minus two-fifths secant to the fifth theta plus a third secant cubed theta plus c, right? Okay. Okay. Whenever I see secants and tans, my, my first thought is I really want to let you be secant or you be tangent because I like that it's derivative. I mean, it's the one I know the derivative of better. And that will work if your secant's power is even, right? So here you can let u equal tan. And I think actually the other way won't work. If you let u equal secant, you don't have enough tans. You don't have enough tans, exactly, yep. I don't, if, I don't know if anybody's looked, but your book actually like even broke this out into cases and said, oh, if the power is blah, you do this, the power is blah, you do that. But I think it's just better to think about it. Wow, that's noisy. Ah! Okay. Oh, is that really what it is? <laughs> it's all good. C can't square theta, C can't square theta, D theta. Okay. So tan squared theta. So what does our secant squared theta become? Tan squared theta plus 1. So that's the integral of a u squared, u squared plus 1 <coughs> du. Do you agree? OK. So integral u to the fourth plus u squared du, one fifth tan to the fifth theta, plus a third tan cubed theta, plus c. Awesome, good. Trick subs are hard, right? Yeah, it is probably the, so you have to, with trig subs, you have to know when to apply which substitution, right? That's, that's kind of thing one. And thing two is just don't forget to put everything in, right? If you run against the integral that is like weird and hard to solve, you probably forgot to put dx in. That's like the most prob prob probable error that you made. So when you have number minus variable squared, which one is that? The sine one. When it's variable minus number, it's secant, and when there's a plus, it's tangent. tangent. Okay. So in this case, x is equal to 2 sine theta. Uh, dx is 2 cosine theta d theta, right? Yes? Okay. So sticking it all in, we have, so x squared is 4 sine squared theta, right? dx is 2 cosine theta d theta. You agree? The denominator, is it okay if I write it as a root and then I cube it? Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Like it's the 3 halves power? Yeah. So that's 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. What does that denominator become pre-cubing? Two is two cosine theta. Do you guys agree? Because you take out the four, and I think that's a step that you can totally skip. You're with that, which becomes root. 
4 cosine squared theta, right? So the 4 roots to 2 and the cosine squared roots to cosine. <coughs> Now, what kind of stuff is going to cancel? The eights will cancel, and also a cosine. So can I make that into tan squared? OK. All right. And then, a lot, unfortunately, a lot of these integrals reduce things that involve like modestly clever tricks. So you don't know how to anti-differentiate tan squared, right? But you know how to anti-differentiate secant squared, right? Can you somehow change this tan squared into secant squareds? Yeah, right? So is it secant squared minus 1, I think, right? Yes. <coughs> that's the only way I know how to do that problem. OK? So it just involves knowing that. You have to change it all back into x. Is that yes, you do. So what's the antiderivative of secant squared? Tan. And theta, antiderivative of 1 is, I just said it, theta plus c. Okay, I have a question. Yes. If it was a definite integral, you would have changed the tone by now. Yes, and if it so was, if it was uh, the next one, I believe, is a definite integral. Can I answer that question on the next one? Sure. Because I think what you're going to ask is, do I have to go back to x's if I have bounds? Was that the question you were going to ask? Yeah. The answer is no. No. Yep. Yep, if you've changed your bounds, you never have to go back to the original variable, ever in any kind of situation. But in this one, because you have an, an unbounded integral, you have to go back to x's. And so in that sense, you have to use the triangle thing. And I had a great question about, you said never to have arc sine or whatever, and you know, when do I, when is it OK? And I think I hopefully can answer that now, again, but just so everyone knows. So the substitution produces the triangle. You have that x over 2 is equal to sine of theta, right? So, so opposite hypotenuse, right? X2. By your favorite theorem, what's the other side? Mm -hmm. Square root 4 minus x squared. Great. Hmm? Pythagorean, it, do, it does every single time. Yep. That's how I know messing up. Yeah, it's one hint. <laughs> okay, and then tangent is opposite over adjacent, so x over root 4 minus x squared. What do you have to put in for theta? Arc sine or sine inverse, right? They're the same thing. And so when can you answer the question, when is it OK and actually necessary to put in arc sine or sine inverse, and when do you have to use the triangle? Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't give you full credit if you said tangent of arc sine. Okay. Does that make sense? That's actually not simplified. So the triangle is used to simplify the parts that are angles, or, tri or like tangent, sine, cosine, right? If it's a singular theta, as in like just theta, then you have to use the inverse function. Yes? I thought I'm planning on doing this, but in case I forget, if I do put a tangent arc sign, I get no credit at all? No, you just don't get full credit. Like, the, you can, maybe out of, like, eight points, it's one or two points to do the right triangular substitution. You might miss one or two. I'm not sure how much yet because we haven't discussed that. Okay. But you would, as long as everything else was correct, you would just not get full credit. You wouldn't get a zero. Okay. Yes? Um, it might be in the next problem or two. I'm not sure. But what if you have tangent, like, of two theta? That, that won't happen. The only instance when you're, because I don't know, we haven't talked about how to change that. The only time when you're going to have angle of something is if you're going to have sine of 2 theta, and you have to use that 2 sine theta cosine theta. That occurred on your quiz. That's the only one I've told you how to change twice back into singulars, and we're, there will be no other instances on the test. There is a formula that does it, but we're not going to make you memorize it. This one you might have to know for the test. Yeah, that's a legit thing. That was on a quiz. It was second proctored quiz. I think it was question number two you had to use that in on the second proctored quiz. You. You're welcome. Okay, how about this one? Is it even possible to change the bounds? Yes, I think. What's the substitution? X, X is secant, okay. What's dx? Uh, I think it's secant tan. Oh, I'm sorry, secant tan. 
yeah, that's all good. Yep, so secant tan. Is it possible to change the bounds? Of course it is. Of course. If I have 1 equals secant theta, like I can't think in terms of secant. Let's, just, let's think of cosines. That's the same thing as saying 1 equals 1 over cosine of theta, which means that we're also just saying cosine theta has to equal 1, right? That is at an angle of 0, yes. Theta is equal to 0. Okay, so my lower bound becomes 0. Um, if 2 equals secant theta, that's 2 equals 1 over cosine. So what does cosine have to equal then? 1 half. And does that happen at this angle or at this angle? Second one. Yep, theta is pi thirds. So yes, it is possible. Bye bye x. Now you don't need to fiddle with those triangles. Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of nice of us. It's actually, in this in this case, it seems like definite integrals are actually a bit nicer, aren't they? Yeah. 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 So we have secant squared theta minus one. Um, secant theta, tan theta, d theta, all over secant theta. Yeah. I think that the integrand becomes tan squared again. Am I right? It's definitely not tan cubed. Because you root the tangent Where squared. Does it gets multiplied by the other tan theta. Oh, because you get tan squared, then it's square roots. Too. Yeah, yeah, you square it square, then it roots. Exactly. Yep. And so once again, same trick. Tan squared theta changes into. Uh, mm hmm. So that's tangent theta minus theta. No need to go back and mess with that triangle. Oh, but you got to find tangent of pi thirds. Oh, no. Okay, I'm glad that made, you, made somebody laugh. What's tangent of zero? So tan of pi thirds is sine pi thirds <coughs> over cosine pi thirds. I think sine is root three over two, right? Cosines a half, yes? Okay. And so root 3 over 2 over a half just makes root 3. So if you didn't take the same route and use a triangle, you get the same answer? If you didn't take the same route and you use a triangle, you would get the same answer, but you'd have to plug 1 and 2 into your answer. It's like you have to go back to the x numbers. Okay. It is definitely more work. And like when I do my test for like time, I do it the easier way. Does that make sense? So if you don't do it the easy way, you might put yourself in a position of running out of time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, yes. No, 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 no. no. Those will be given on the test if you need them. Okay, partial fraction, decomposition. So just tell me the decompositions for these things. Don't actually, like, find them. Like, don't actually find the A, Bs, and Cs. Does that make sense? This is basically three points. Yeah, basically, yeah, in some ways. That's all you're going to ask? Uh, no, not necessarily. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the only question I'm going to have will be one like this, and that's it. Yeah. No, but, on some, but if you don't have this step, you can't get the rest, right? So just for now, let's review how do we do this. So first, this was the, first, the x squared minus 4 factors, right? Well, yeah. If you don't factor it, why is bx plus c wrong? Because the bx plus c is only if you have an irreducible quadratic, which means an unfactorable quadratic. So that's, it's, it's a fancy math theorem that I definitely haven't proved to you, and you just have to, have to know how it works. So it's a good question, but I, just, I, I can't answer it. So it breaks into a over x plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x minus. That's like your first step 
if you were trying to integrate that function. <coughs> it's not all of catching, like, can you do that? And the reason that I asked this question sort of on this thing is that I once, when I gave a quiz, gave a true-false question, is this the right decomposition or not on a quiz that I gave in the past? So they had to know that. Okay, how about this guy? It's a little bit special because that x squared is repeated, right? So you have to have one term for, uh-huh, another term for, mm-hmm, and then a last term over x minus 4, right? Does that mean bx plus c? Nope, nope. In the case of repeated factors, it's still just a constant. Even though the, even though the x squared is yep. a squared power. Yep, it's still just a constant. The next one has the bx plus c thing. Technically speaking, x squared factors into x times x. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, that's why it's still a linear term on top. So like, and had it been x cubed, it'd be like a over x, b over x squared, c over x cubed. So that's whenever they're repeated, it's still you kind of go with like the lowest powers numerator type thing. Okay. And then this one would be a over x, right? Plus over x squared plus 4. And that's because x squared plus 4 doesn't factor. That's when you do the bx plus c. All right, this guy. This is kind of the easiest one you're going to get, right? In some sense. Okay, so how does that denominator factor? Y minus 6, Y plus 2. Great. So A over Y minus 6 and B over Y plus 2. It doesn't matter which order you put those factors in, you're just going to get your numbers in the opposite orders then. But you'll still have the same number over the same denominator. Okay. Then you multiply by the denominator of the left-hand side, which gives you 1 equals a times y plus 2 plus b times y minus 6. Right? And then if you can use your whole clever plug-in numbers trick, you should do so, right? So when you plug in y equals negative 2, what do you get? 1 equals b times negative 8. So b is equal to negative 1 eighth. Great. What's the other clever number you plug in? 6. And that gives you 1 equals, I think, 8a, right? So a is an eighth. And once you do all that algebra, the rest of it isn't so bad, right? You have the integral of an eighth over y minus 6 plus negative 1 eighth over y plus 2. And unlike algebra 1 in high school, when you get fractions in this class, you're not actually always wrong, right? <laughs> So what's your final answer? Ln minus 6 times Ln minus 2. Yep, great. Technically, things like Wolfram Alpha and other integrators online, or even if you have a TI-80, whatever, it might combine that into, what it might do with it is it might make it into natural log absolute value y minus 6 over y plus 2, and it'd make it like the eighth root of that. You don't have, that's rules of logs, you don't, because these coefficients become powers and subtraction becomes a log of the ratio. You don't have to do that, it's just that for checking your work, that might happen. Okay, awesome. Whew, this guy. So a good thing to check is technically speaking, would you do long division or is the power of the denominator actually big enough? It's big enough, yeah, because the power in the bottom, the highest, highest power is 4, right, if you were to multiply it out. Okay, so it's kind of a gross one. You ready? So what would the, what would the breakdown be? Yes, plus B over yep. Yep. 
Yep. Has anybody been able to deduce a pattern for when the whole plugging numbers in won't work? Yeah. Stuff like this, yeah. And it also doesn't work for everything when you have repeated coefficients, repeated so factors. When you've got an x squared term, because no matter what you put in, it's going to be positive. Exactly. That's exactly it. No matter what you put in, it's going to be positive. And I almost made an error there. Test, the numerator will never be able to factor into anything. It's not going to help you, so just don't do it. Okay. Yep. Plus x squared plus. Is that does that pretty much make sense? What I just did there. I'm just going to not keep. I'm going to keep. I'm not going to re keep recopying the left side. I'm just going to fuss with the right side. Is that okay? So if I fuss and distribute on the right, I have ax cubed plus 2ax plus bx squared plus 2b, great, plus uh, cx cubed plus cx plus dx squared plus d. You guys agree with that? Okay. So then, who are the x cubes? A plus c. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three. Who are the squareds? Who are the um, x's? 2a plus c, I think. Do you guys agree with that? And then the... 2b plus d. Okay. Oh, goodness. You ready? What's a plus c got to be? Mm -hmm. What's b plus d has to be? Uh, 2a plus c has to equal 6. And 2b plus d has to equal Yeah, so this one and this one used together are going to help you find some stuff, right? As in, I could say that, I don't know, C was equal to 3 minus A, yes? And then that 3 minus A can go in for the C. So 2A plus 3 minus A is 6. I think then we get A equals 3. Do you guys agree? I'll just check my notes real quick to make sure I got the same thing, but yeah, I got A is 3. And then therefore, going back to here, what does C have to equal? 0. Okay. Same idea. How about I take this one and I get like D. <coughs> D is equal to negative 1 minus B, right? Take that, put it in for there. So 2b plus negative 1 minus b plus negative 4. I think I get b is equal to negative 3. Do you guys agree? And holy bejesus, d is equal to 2. I'm totally going to need a new slide. It's not very organized. I can move that up and then... Just move it up. My main point with this one was not, it probably won't be as tedious in the test that took, that took a long time, right? But the main point is what happens when you have to do the integral, because there's a question, a question like this in your quiz. So our original integral, so we had A, I forgot what I had. What was AX plus B over? So 3 over X squared plus 2 was the first one? Yeah? The next one is... Wait, hold on a second. That should be x plus b, so wouldn't that be 3x squared minus... And it should be over x squared plus 1. Okay. Oh, well, you stupid. Go away. 
I want you to delete you. Ah, there we go. Yes. Okay. So I won't trust myself anymore. So the integral of ax plus b, so 3x minus 3 over x squared plus 1. Oh, c is 0. That's helpful. Plus 2 over x squared plus 2. Is that better? Okay. One of those is easy. Yes, and you should know how to deal with the first one because it's happened on in class twice and on a quiz. Right? How do you deal with that first one? You break it into 3x over x squared plus 1 minus 3 over x squared plus 1 plus 2 over x squared plus 2. Yeah, two of those are easy. And the first one's actually technically at u substitution. That's not that hard, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, see, you can do that. So isn't it 3 halves natural log x squared plus 1? Yes. The next one's really easy. It's just 3 tan inverse x, right? Mm -hmm. And the final one is ooh, tan inverse. What goes inside there? x over root 2, very good, and then 2 over root 2 out front, which actually technically is root 2, but that was a painful enough problem.